The Fast of Daniel From 11th to 31st December Concluding in the New Year's Eve Night Vigil Hello to all, we are starting one more day of the Fast of Daniel And for you who say, I want to change my life I want the Holy Spirit, I want to know God I don't want to know, you know, just information. I've seen information. I have made my research, but I need to know God. Well, you need to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And for that, you're going to have to do the required, the required sacrifices for that. Anything great in life requires sacrifice from us requires taking a decision. For instance, if you say, I want to go you know, to uni, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be an engineer, any profession will require you first to decide and second, to do the sacrifices required for you to achieve it. So when you decide, I want to be a different person, I want to belong to God. I want to know God. So it is no different. And in fact, the sacrifices that are necessary are even greater for you to receive the Spirit of God. And this is what I want to talk about because we are talking about the decision. And today I want to read with you Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. And before we start reading, a question for you. Do you want Jesus to forgive your sins? Do you want Jesus to forgive you? You may say, yes, I do. I want to be forgiven. I want to be forgiven from my sins. So, verse 14, it says, For if, condition, condition, if you forgive men, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if, a condition, you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will you, your Father forgive your trespasses. Let us read it in a, in a plain English for you. Let us understand it better in this way. Let me read it. In a, in a, let me rewrite it in a, in a clear way for you. For if you decide a decision, you decide to forgive men their sins against you, your heavenly Father, so God, will also forgive you. But if you decide not to forgive men their sins against you, Neither will God forgive your sins. Are you understand? Is it clear? So a decision, it always involves, you know, cutting off something. Always, always. You know, the word decision from its, its roots, it comes from seizure. So to cut, it to, to cut off something. If you decide, if you are there uh, wondering, or oh, what, what uni college I should go, w- which university should I choose? I have University A, University B, University C. So when you make your decision, at least, at least one of the options you're going to have to cut off. Sometimes more, if you're going to decide for a university, you pass in two universities, University A and University B. You cannot handle both, so you decide which one you want, A or B. If you say B, you're going to have to cut off A. If you say A, you're going to have to cut off B. If you say, I decide to be forgiven by God, you're going to have to cut off the hatred, the, the pain, the grudges you have against somebody. It's simple. I want to receive, so I have to give. There is no way to make a decision without getting to lose something and not losing many times something that is profitable for you. 
you're going to have to decide to lose the hatred, the anger, the grudge to be forgiven. So it's a great loss. It's a great loss in a very good way. But you're going to have to let go of that hatred you have against someone. You say, I want to know God. I want to belong to God. Okay, so you're going to have to make a decision to let go of the way you have been that put you far from God. To abandon the sin. Do you see the seizure? Do you see the cut you have to make in order to have a decision? This Sunday, at all universal church all over the world and here in Helsinki will not be different. We're going to have the Sunday of decision. You know, for you who say, I'm going to cut off the bad behaviors, the sinful nature, the sinful life, and I want to meet God. You will lose at one side, but you're going to win at the other side. But what is the biggest problem with the human beings? Human beings, they want to have it all. They don't want never to lose. And that's why they lost more and more their time, their bad choices. And so they continue being a failure because they didn't decide the way they should. You should decide what do you want for your eternal life and make the necessary cuts for it. Cut off what put you away from God. You know, a person wants, oh, I want, a two, I want that job, but I don't want to leave this one. So they will never get the other job because they don't take a decision to leave, let go what they, they have to lose now to win later. And this is very important in faith. You're going to have to let go of your religiousness, of culture, backgrounds, many things that sometimes impede you from giving your life to Jesus. Like the testimony we're going to watch now of Carrie. You know, she, she had to make decisions in life to change who she was. She couldn't have everything the way she wanted. She had to let go of a lot of bad behaviors in order to receive the Spirit of God in her life. And I'm sure she doesn't regret the choice, the decision that she made. Listen, listen carefully, carefully to her testimony when you hear the words decisions that she made. And after, we're going to come back making the prayer for all of you. At the age of five years old, I saw a lot of violence at home. It was to a point my dad was always violent with my mom. And it was to a point where I saw him um, beating her, slapping her, and it was really, really bad. He, it broke me down and I had a lot of anger towards him. And as we grew, as we grew up, my mom started to take it out on us, on me especially. I felt like I was the black sheep of the family. Every time she would take it out on me, me, me. And it got to a point where I just erupted. And because of that, it led me to do things that I didn't want to do. I would take drugs to escape from all the problems that I was facing at home. I would uh, meet out with boys, with friends, with group of friends. We would do things that we wasn't supposed to do. Things that I always said to myself that I would never do, but I ended, ended up doing. So from the age of 16, I got pregnant and then I had an abortion. From that point, I got arrested because of the anger and all the, the situation that I was going through in life. It led me to having anger issues at home to the point where I stabbed my sister. I don't even remember stabbing her, I blacked out at that moment. On my second arrest, I was for domestic violence. That moment, I just, I flipped. I just went angry, I ranged. My mom said something. I don't remember what she said, but she just said one word and I, I, I went out. I blacked out all. Oh. And it was to a point where I got arrested because I turned my whole house upside down. I destroyed my own house. And inside of me, I felt very down. I felt downcast. I felt like no one was there to listen to what I, I was going through at that moment. I felt neglected, rejected. Many times, I just wanted to end my life. Many times I wanted to commit suicide, but again, I never had the strength to take my own life. So I thought, okay, because of me being arrested, having a criminal record, I said to myself, I'm gonna live my life the way I need to live it. I didn't care what anyone was gonna think about me. I didn't care how my life was gonna be, if I was gonna wreck it. It was already wrecked anyways, what more can I have done? Many times I thought that that's how my life was meant to be. So from 2005, I remember 
going to the church with my sister and eventually we stopped going. We just stopped going. And then in 2017, I remember I was 19 years old and I said I needed help. I needed someone to help me with my situation, to resolve my problems that I was facing. And that's when I decided to head, return back to the church. So the pastor started to invite, advise me to start attending the Friday services. So I did. And I was constantly coming. And as I was coming, I was letting go of the grudges. I was letting go of the anger that I had built inside of me, the addiction, everything. And from then on, I've not been the same. Honestly, I can truly say that my countenance has changed from within. And after my deliverance, I realized the most important thing that I needed was the Holy Spirit, which was advised by the pastor. And he said to me, you can be in the church for one year, two years, three years, four years, 20 years. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you have an expiry date, you're going to leave. In the 21 days, I had to confess things that I had in my mind. And these were sexual thoughts, uh, promiscuous thoughts. It was kind of embarrassing to confess to God, but I had to do it, which was very hard. So in regards to my family, I had to you know, speak to my mom what was going on inside of me. I had to confess to her about things that I had inside of me towards her, even my sister, feelings that I had. And I asked her for forgiveness. This was one of the things that I asked for. One of the biggest issues that I had was believing in myself. I never thought that I could receive the Holy Spirit. And the more I kept on seeking God, the more I kept on talking to God, the more I kept emptying out myself before God, God was confirming with me that you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. So I remember preparing myself. I anointed my clothes. I, I seek the Holy Spirit. I fasted. I did everything I could to receive the Holy Spirit. I even said, God, I made a vow, I said, God, I'm going to bring this one soul to you. This will be my present to you and I'm going to receive you. This will be my day. That Wednesday was the last of the 21 days. We came and the Holy Spirit said, I'm inside of you. He confirmed it inside of me. I, and from that day, I never felt the same. I never left the same. My mind wasn't the same. I no longer get angry or become violent. I'm not this, like, I believe in myself, even if I was, think of me otherwise, but I believe in myself. I truly believe in myself. I believe that God is with me, that God is gonna protect me. He's gonna guide me through it. It's been 18 months since I've been raised as an assistant. And I can truly say that my desire more than anything is to saving souls, is to give to them what they never received from anyone, is to open their minds and to give them what God has given to me. Father, how many people, they want to receive their pardon, their forgiveness, but they don't decide to forgive. They don't decide to let go. They want to receive without letting go. And like we, we teach them, we explain them today, this is not the way that things go, and especially the way there it need to be to know you, to receive from you. You set a condition for us to receive your forgiveness. And for some, it might seem impossible to clear, to clean their hearts, to forgive those who hurt them. But it is not impossible. It all depends on them to decide to do what is required to be done. So strengthen those who are still struggling with grudges. Strengthen those who are still struggling with fears to let go of something in order to receive some much greater blessing that is the Holy Spirit. Letting go of the religiousness, letting go of cultural background, things that may just make them stuck in time, stuck in their faith and not knowing you truly. Father, I bless those who are seeking your spirit. Let your spirit come and reveal to them the decisions they need to make in order to know you, in order to have your spirit, to have your presence in them. I bless you right now, you who are in this fast of Daniel, 
day after day, seeking thirstily to be filled with His Spirit, receive life, receive peace, receive the love of God right now in your life. And you that believe, say Amen. Amen, dear friends. So, the invitation is there for you. Make a decision. Decide to leave your house this Sunday and to come. Decide to change who you are. Decide to forgive. Every decision that you make, it will take at least one thing that you're going to have to cut off. At least one. Sometimes more. But it's going to be beneficial, profitable if you decide in the right way. God bless all of you. Do you remember how you started 2021? For most people, it's very easy to remember because that's exactly the same way that they are today. Nothing has changed. Same problems, same results. Repeat the same mistakes year after year. What is missing is one decision. A decision to do everything different. This Sunday, December 19, the D-Day. The Fast of Daniel. From 11th to 31st December. Concluding in the New Year's Eve night vigil.